right, folks. Today we are in Matt's truck. We're going to get, um, what are we going? Oh, a buddy of mine who I have known for years. He comes to a lot of my gigs and watches me play. Uh, posted on Facebook Marketplace that he's got like a shit ton of mahogany. I'm not sure if it's Honduras or African mahogany, uh, but at a ridiculous price. Like it's, God, I can't remember how many board feet it is, but basically we're gonna fill up the entire bed of this truck. It's 50 sticks, uh, 10 foot long by like three inches wide by two inches thick uh, of the mahogany and I think eight 10 foot boards of walnut which I will not be using the walnut for guitars, but... Uh, He's gonna get a lot of lumber, I'm gonna test the suspension. On the <laughs> exactly, this is a Toyota Tacoma, so we're, we're gonna put her put her through the paces. A half ton she is not. Uh, and uh, But no, for $225, I don't mind saying it, I'll say it. Uh, uh, so it's like, quick back of the envelope math, like this should be don't tell Eric uh, who we're buying the wood from, but this should easily be north of a thousand dollars worth of wood. So uh, uh, I had to snatch it up. The nice thing about Matt is he's got a lot of property up here where we live, so we're gonna grab that wood and somehow stash it uh, under one of Matt's pole barns. I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's Matt's quiet this morning. Oh no! Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> prop, props to the Miller family for having plenty of sheds. So that's right. Know? Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Um, because I just don't have any room. Uh, I've got a little shed at my place that I'm eventually going to convert to wood storage, lumber storage, but it's just not there yet. My wife uh, has got a, a to-do list for me to do before I get there. But uh, So we'll, we'll sign back in here in a second once we get to Eric's place and show you show you the uh, the uh, the hall. Yeah. All right, so Matt's already loading up the old truck of Rooney. And here's what we're getting over here on this wood. That's Eric. Say hello. Hey. <laughs> have the wood that we got from uh, Eric's place. It's a lot of, a lot of like, uh, uh, I don't know, half inch thick, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, three inch strips, uh, which will make some really good like curving and stuff for guitars. It's literally enough curving for the rest of my entire life. Um, we got some Ipe. Yeah. That was just a, uh, just a good little find. Uh, some Ipe that we'll use for, um, but we don't know. Matt's restoring a sailboat. He maybe uses some of that. We use it for cutting boards. Uh, it's, Ipe Nima. Yeah. Ipe Nima. <laughs> but uh, it's just a good find. I mean, when somebody offers you a good quality lumber, you take it. It's, that's just the rule. Yeah. And uh, some walnut. Um, so that's super cool. And then I ended up getting a nice little Canon uh, 70 to 300 millimeter lens that we'll use for something because they're uh, they're moving so they had they were trying to <laughs> trying to give us all kinds of stuff. <laughs> um, but now for Black Bear Bread Company yeah, for yeah. some some coffee. Yeah, well, treat treat yourself. Treats especial. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna park in here like I don't have a eight feet of lumber in the back of my truck. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know, let that uh let someone run into that. All right, here we are at the Matt Miller Homestead. <laughs> yeah, welcome to my house. Welcome to my crib. Uh, <laughs> But uh, we're just gonna stash it over here because he's got like, they live on the farm and, and it actually kind of works out perfect for this, this giant covered barn area. Yeah. So we, there's the uh, mess taking the Ipe. We're gonna chuck it over here. And uh, some good stuff here. Like I said, it's all 10 foot boards. Um, a lot of it is, a lot of it is, uh, you know, fairly thin. Um, but some of it's going to be usable for all kinds of different things, projects. But, you know, what I, what I see, you know, somebody goes, hey, I've got 50 pieces of mahogany. You take it. Am I, am I wrong? You take it. So, uh, yeah, super cool. Um, we will head back to the, you know, to the shop after this and show you kind of what we're getting into for the day. All right, we're back in the shop. Uh, <laughs> We got Matt on the CNC machine here. He literally, the first thing he did was 
slam the CNC machine into the scoreboard. We had a nice day. We had a nice lunch. We sat down, and then yeah, I. Uh, this is why we can't have nice things. This is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> Oh, We're okay. having a bit of a Monday here. Yeah, I got a case in the Mondays. So Matt's uh, the plan is to cut that the front of this body mm -hmm. on the CNC machine, so we can at least say that we did something today. So far, it's it's all, just, all, all we've done is <laughs> all we've done is broke a thirty-five dollar bit. <laughs> It's weird that we're not. I'll never find it's weird that we're not profitable. I can't believe we're not profitable. <laughs> yeah. All right, tell the folks what we're doing, Matt. Um, so I um, am drilling some alignment holes for indexing. So what we uh, part of the way that we ensure accuracy in our uh, in our manufacturing, so we've got. Um, well, this has an extra alignment hole. That's a story for another time. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so what we do uh, these pinholes, they're not actually going to show up in the uh, body of the electric guitar. It, it, um, it's going to cut around it. But uh, it basically, it allows us to do multiple processes or do multiple guitars and keep the same process and make it repeatable. Um, it guarantees that it stays in the same place and it guarantees that every single time we perform an operation with a CNC yeah. machine, it does the so exact show same them thing. On, uh, on the spoil board, this, for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with CNC machines, this is called the spoil board. Uh, it's the board we spoil. This is the board uh, we often spoil. Yeah. So you actually have the machine drill two holes. That's right. Mm -hmm. Here and here. And those holes are going to line up with the holes here in the blank yep. of our body. And those holes run through. And actually, I need some. Let me get the yeah. Holes. They run through the front and the back. And so we can align those holes on the spoil board with the body. And then when we go to flip it, we realign the holes on the back side. Uh, so we, what you end up with is basically being able to flip the front and back and do a two side. Operation. That's right. Let's see if Matt can break, breaks about the right bit in a second. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna break all the things. There we go. Yeah. We had to drill the holes. There we go. See. Yeah, nice. Okay. And now try to give it a wiggle, Matt. It's not going anywhere. See, it's it's rock solid. Yep. Sometimes we do have to end up putting clamps here and, and here, uh, but. And, we're, and I'm gonna do that anyways because it's cheap insurance. Yeah, it's cheap insurance. But he's actually not realizing he's put it on upside down. But that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the little things. But uh, but yeah, yeah, that's that's what we're gonna do. So but I'm gonna have Matt put that one, clamp it in, and then we'll do um, kind of run the operation. Jesus Christ! Uh, <laughs> but we're gonna do the the whole front operation on the guitar, which will give us the um, will give us this. Cut the profile out of the top. But we like to have a good time around. Um, the neck pocket dog, what we're calling the dog bone P90 single coil, as well as the hole for the um, the the tone knob and volume knob. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do that, so you guys can get a look at, at that. That's this is actually the simple part. The more complicated part of the prototyping process for these guitars has been um, doing the neck. The neck has been the bane of our existence, and there's issues that we've been having with um, with the bodies. But those are mostly just user error. Yeah. Like those we can overcome. But uh, so we'll be back in a second with that part. So the uh, the bits that we're going to use to run this whole front operation of these uh, these are Armana uh, tools. I get them from Tools Today. This is the. Uh, they the don't Spectre pay us to say that, but they should. Yeah, the Spectre coated two flute upcut bit quarter inch. This is the super sexy uh, half inch uh, compression bit. Is it wrong to be aroused by a tool? No, it is. It's, it's fine to this, be aroused this by is, a tool. This is smut right here. This <laughs> is filth. <laughs> we can just use this little guy, this little one here, to do um, the string holes. But so just with those three tools, I do believe, yeah, that gives us everything we need to run the whole operation. That's right. Get the first bit loaded in. Um, this is the process of, it's called uh, touching off or zeroing mm -hmm. the z-axis. It might be too high up to do it. So she's going to drop down. And touch. Boop. Nice. Okay. There we go. You can do this uh, by hand, um, or just like by uh, manually by inspection. But um, I've already broken one bit today, and I think that's enough for that's a Monday. Enough. That's enough. And that's for a, a brand Monday. new bit. So. Was it? Well, no, the one that. The oh, one this one. Oh, okay. I was about to say. I thought that one was. Uh, yeah. yeah. Are you going to use the dust shoe? Um. Yes. Definitely. 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 So you will not get to see all the fancy cuts, but making a lot of sawdust right here. Oh, hey, um, also contact us if you guys want any uh, 
Yeah, uh, if these look really nice, uh, they're not, but we made them with the leather handles. <laughs> the spoke so, wrenches. Yeah. The spoke. Yeah, that's our favorite word around here. <laughs> start kind of assembling these guitars I want to show you guys a little bit more about what that's all about but uh, yeah so that's the first operation on the tops done and done it's actually not the first operation because we've already skipped the drop top operation yeah because um, before that piece of maple goes on to the guitar um, we actually uh, milled the swamp ash to the correct thickness and then it's actually a chambered body so there's actually chambers in it we also put the pockets in it for the wiring to go through then we glue it on and then this is the final operation mm -hmm. so um, now we have a, a 91 hundredths bit or however you say that point <laughs> 0.091 inches I hate the, listen I hate the imperial system as much as the rest of the world <laughs> but uh, we have a primarily American audience, and I use metric in the shop almost all the time. But you got to cater to the audience. <laughs> yeah. oh, you got that upside down touch plate. So once again, you switch bits, and we touch off. You can bring it down some first, Matt. It, it helps a lot to save some time. There you go. So the way this works is there is a... Um, piece of magnet right here actually has a, a wire runs through it and this touch plate there's a little bit of current run through it so once it touches it knows completes a signal it completes the signal and then and it knows how far this gap is and subtracts that distance to know where the actual top of the surface is a CNC, I see I've told a couple people it's a uh, it's a little bit like having three really 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 powerful strong blind guys uh, all working together, and you have to try to explain to yeah. the machine where it exists. In that the was universe. like day one of me teaching Matt how to use CNC machine. I said, yeah, imagine you've got a blind guy, yeah, who's a really good craftsman, and you know, you have to tell him where this is in three dimensional space, and then where the part is in three dimensional space, and then it has all the information in its brain. Yeah. So. Yep. So that's where you can really screw up is that operation that we just did, because a lot of times if you're in a hurry, you switch bits. <laughs> And you forget to zero off again. Which, yeah, uh, it, while we're here, you know. Um, and then you'll crash. Oh, yeah, yeah this is you, can, you can crash. So I, I feel very lucky to work where I work because uh, Chris and I have similar philosophies about uh, learning and mistakes and growing and whatnot. But, um, yeah, this is my I'm, – I'm pretty proud of this one, actually. Um, I, I, Chris wasn't in the shop whenever I did this, and I'm sorry he missed how tragic this was. But, yeah, that's a, that's not an easy bit to break, but I that's did that. That's a 3 inch mm -hmm. uh, three-flute compression bit. And it's funny because I had just – went on a walk with my son and my wife and uh matt or i was just telling him because that was the day we were getting a lot of tops cut yeah or, and i was like dude it's we're gonna crash an entire body it's gonna happen we're gonna screw it up it's just a matter of when and when <laughs> it five wasn't minutes five minutes later he was actually just gonna was good he was like whatever, were, whatever you did whatever that <laughs> he was, said I was he's like i was just gonna venmo you the money <laughs> <laughs> But no, our philosophy in the shop, obviously, and I hope that anybody who's learning, and anybody who's a, an avid builder knows this, that you don't learn anything from success, you only learn from the failures, and it's so freaking true, mm -hmm. uh, you have to make the mistakes. And Matt knew, yeah. and he, in his mind, he knew that you had the zero, the Z, but it's not until you actually crash it that it really sticks. Mm -hmm. And he'll do it again. Uh, yeah. Well, he did it not, you know, a few minutes ago. Yep. Uh, but you, I did it. Way more than Matt has done it when I first got my CNC machine. I, I probably I bought all the best bits, you know, all the good shit, and then I, I probably broke half of them in the first month. But, uh, you know, it's a thing. Yeah. It's a thing. We'll we learn. learn. We live, we learn. You don't even got <laughs> Live, laugh, love. Matt. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that operation was um, just all we've got is just pecking basically the string hole locations for when the bridge goes on the guitar. Uh, very similar to what you see here. So that when the bridge goes on it, let me see. I've got a bridge right here. This is just a mock-up bridge that we have. 
um, but so when it goes on those holes line up here and um, it also is a good illustration of why those indexing pins are important because with the pins that go in those holes that matches had drilled are lining up perfectly with the ferrule holes that are on the back side so um, yeah, and now this will be the last operation. This one's the much messier one. Mm -hmm. um, this is also the operation that I second. messed up. Because you can see, this is the big boy. This is the half inch diameter compression bit. And the reason that it's a compression bit, I've got a square one in here. Yeah. Sorry. We're okay. Um, but a compression bit, The these teeth here are actually up cuts. And these ones here are down cuts, and they just really do a good job of um, preventing tear out and blow out on the top end. Um, they're just in with such a large diameter too, you can really put them at a nice feed rate. But uh, once again, new bit means a new touch off, and there we go. Sorry for the uh, bad exposure, but that's how it goes. So we're definitely going to put the dust shoe on this one, and it's uh, going to go to work. And this will be the last operation on the top. This is the operation I messed up last time, so I'm, this is closure for me. This is very <laughs> this cathartic. Is closure. Eh, wrong button. Yeah. Resume. All right, good, good, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. With that bit being so long as our dust extraction does not work very well with it, but that's all right. It makes it look like we've been doing something. Uh, so you can see that this is all cut out. I know I'm kind of stealing Matt's glory here. Oh no. <laughs> um, I'm actually not going to pull this completely out of the sides yet because I got to use it to as a template for another one that we messed up. Uh, but you can see. Well, it's not all the way through on this side. So it didn't cut all the way through here. Um, so we'll actually have to go through and uh, cut it out with the um, the, uh, the the bandsaw. Yeah. But it's dang close. But yeah, that's that's the whole operation to cut the front. The back is very, very similar, obviously. Um, that gets us to where we need to be on this whole situation. Yeah. So we'll cut that out. Um, and then it's going to be using a um, uh, a router to get everything kind of how we want. My, these guitars are gonna be bound as well, so we gotta cut the binding slots in. But this is the, the main roughing part of the operation for us to get where we want. But uh, yeah, and you can see, I mean, that took what? I think in real time, maybe 20 minutes to do that whole, that whole thing, so. Uh, but yeah, just, we just wanted to give you guys a little insight to what we're doing on these electrics so far. That's all the sauce if you see. <laughs> That's exactly it. Um, the last, well, the second to last thing I'll show you guys before we end the video is we got the rest of our carbon fiber D-tubes in from Dragon Plate Technologies, so I want to show you those. Once again, we're going to do a longer in-depth video on these. Honestly, I'm not sure anyone's going to want to see a video doing unboxing something. That just seems... <laughs> that that doesn't, never, I, don't think, I don't think that'll ever take off. That'll never catch on. But these things are ridiculous. This is one of those kind of things where like you get your box and you're like, I spent how much money <laughs> for this? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never financially recover. Yes. Yeah. But uh, so uh, this is, um, we're kind of rolling the dice on this one because we haven't, we haven't, um, I've never done this before with these things. Like I said, they're calling, they call these, these D tubes. Yeah, they do. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I think we showed them for a split second in the last video. They're just incredibly impressive. Um, this is woven carbon fiber. Uh, this is a half inch by three quarters of an inch, no, half inch by three quarters of an inch. Um, and uh, just ridiculous the amount of strength they have on them. Um, and so we've got now eight of these. These are 16 inches in length. And once, the, once again, they're gonna replace 
the entire uh, truss rod section. In fact, here you go. You can see on this, this is an acoustic neck that I'm, I'm just about to carve. But uh, so normally the way that I've been doing is two carbon fiber rods here and then the truss rod, which I don't know where it's at right now. Oh, here we go. Then I, anybody who's watching this video, I'm sure knows what a truss rod does, right? It goes in there. I use the, um, the Stumac hot rod two-way truss rods. Uh, so the carbon fiber in this model, which I've been using for years, is, is giving me a lot of stability. Um, whereas I still have a little bit of control to how much relief's in the neck. So what we're going to try to do is to, to change that out and use just this carbon fiber D-tube. Uh, which in theory should allow me to have a neck that is basically perfectly straight with just the slightest little bit of relief in it. Um, and uh, however I do the, do the fret setup on it, it's shouldn't move at all and what's been really cool about it is um, is we actually do the glue up of this on this perfectly milled granite slab that we have over there so when you set this on here this is a machine straight edge just like just it's absolutely perfect hey, so <laughs> hey, that's my son hey, daddy. you say hi to the camera hi hi <laughs> hey, daddy. yes buddy um, can we, the we will in just a minute Sound good? Like I love my mommy first. Okay, sounds good. Um, we'll just keep that in. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's something that something that we're working on, and uh, we're gonna. What did I say? We're gonna buy. We might tell. We just might use one of these. We have enough that we might use one of these and, and do a whole episode just to show you guys how strong these things are. I mean, I'm curious. I want to know how strong they are. I think that we could like make some sort of system that holds these up with like weights that we hang on it and measure the amount of deflection until it until it breaks. I think um, the clickbait thumbnail should be us like hanging like uh, by it. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then we could. I would like to do the same thing like a side by side of this traditional. Even this isn't traditional, as you guys know. Usually, there's no carbon fiber rods in a neck. Uh, normally, it's just a truss rod. But I think it, I, I am. We have to do a, like a friendly wager. I'm thinking that we could probably get at least double the amount of weight on a neck like this. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, just taking this thing, and me and Matt have, like, taken them, just, like, try it as hard as we can. You can't even get it to move, like, Deflect. one one iota at all. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's going to be a future episode. And then I'm going to go grab a guitar body that I have just, it's it's been sprayed and with this nitrocellulose lacquer, and it's been buffed out. Or, I'm sorry, it's been sprayed and drying for the last two weeks, and I've got to buff it out and do the final assembly on it. So I think the next video that we put out will be me doing that. So I'm gonna go grab that and I'll be right back. So this is where we is. I'll show them both this mic so you can see a little better. Um, so this is a guitar that is like gonna get buffed out. Um, this is a quilted mahogany neck. It's got some super cool inlays on it. Um, a lot of Christian imagery for the client. This is actually my Da Vinci model, which nobody, I don't think I've done any videos at all on my Da Vinci model. So some of you guys will see this thing out of the gate and be like, well, what the hell, where's the sound hole? Um, this is a balloon <laughs> that I use for when I spray. Uh, but I'm, I, I, when I bought this out, we'll get into more detail, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little teaser. This is a, um, a bear claw spruce, Sika spruce top with um, Brazilian rosewood back and sides. Um, it's got the rib bevel, the arm bevel, the full pearl treatment. Uh, it's pretty much, yeah, this is my completely decked out guitar from top to bottom, so really cool line inlay that I've done on the fretboard, but uh, yeah, so we'll do that, and uh, I think that'll be it for this video, what do you think, Matt? Yeah. Let's see, um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys very shortly, we do appreciate you guys um, watching, what do you always say, like and subscribe, mm -hmm. right? No, like and thing. subscribe, that's the comment, thing. Uh, that's the thing, mm -hmm. yeah, especially the likes, I guess, that helps with the al algorithm, but it does. Uh, yeah. I know that we didn't have anything specific to do in this video, uh, but I just kind of wanted to show you what our day was like today. This is, kind of, I mean, normally we're more productive. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but we like to have a good time around We here. like to have a good time. But uh, thanks, guys. We'll see yeah. you in the next one.